Money is the representation of wealth. And the representation of wealth is the opposite of real wealth. Okay, that's why money itself is now losing its value in the world. Soon money will be worth nothing. Because on the U.S. money, as you know, it's based on the idea in God we trust. But there's no more trust in God. It's certainly not at the level of governments that have become illegitimate in their authority as representations of the divine power of, of love, goodness. And as the, that system collapses, all the representations of wealth that are based on the collective ego are going to fall. The only real wealth is the presence of God. In India, in ancient India, they said there were 16 kinds of wealth. Money was the absolute lowest. Okay? They did have money. It was gold in that time. It wasn't just the kind of money we have now. Not even paper money, but electronic uh, digits. But that was the lowest kind. The highest, of course, was God realization. And then came things such as friendships that were dependable and uh, living in a beautiful environment in which one was in harmony with nature and the health of the physical body and uh, a beloved, uh, loving family, right? All of those kinds of wealth that are real wealth, we have almost all of us lost. And so all we cling on to is money, the lowest kind that is absolutely phony because we've lost all the others. And as we regain the others, starting with God consciousness, everything else will fall into place. It will, we will be taken care of. And our needs for the, uh, the monetary subsistence will be less and less. Our lives will be more simple. I, I find, I mean, I trust, though, at times it's difficult that I will be taken care of. I mm -hmm. believe that. Mm -hmm. Consciousness, I can say this to you, but mm -hmm. I may walk out and not feel that way. Yeah. I understand. And so there must be a constant reaffirmation in the mind that that is the only real wealth. Money isn't going to protect you from bad karma, for example. Money isn't going to keep your body alive, you know. Uh, the only thing that keeps us alive, that keeps us uh, filled with the, the power of even wanting to live, is having the presence of God within us. And that's what gives us the courage to face adversities. There are millionaires who jump out the windows and commit suicide, you know, when the economy collapses. You know, even if they didn't lose all their money, they just lose some of it and they, they can't handle it because their identity is so based on how much they have in the bank. We don't want to ever become identified with our money and we must recognize that even with absolutely nothing, we, if we have the love of God, we will flourish in the world. And that's the basis of monkhood in, in every tradition. You take a vow of poverty. That's what being a fakir is in the Islamic tradition. It means poverty. And once we have taken that vow, that we don't even want anything to do with money, that's when we will be taken care of completely. It's when we fear it that what we fear comes to us. We have to let go of that. And, and now the whole world is having to learn that lesson. That's what the oncoming depression is about. We have depended on false values, and now that will not sustain us any longer. And the void leaves the, the potential for change. Yes. And the catalyst is then yes. finding the potential. Exactly. And so it is God and a spiritual community in which that divine love and mutual support is, uh, is the activating principle, not money and not comp competition. That will be the great role model for the world as it collapses to see that, yes, there is a way forward, but the way is a love economy, not a money economy.